Pirate Spring Training Report continuing here, and we've got Pirate Broadcaster Bob Walk with us at the other end of the line here. Walkie, how you doing today? Okay? Good, Jack. Everything's good. All right. That sounds great. Well, let me talk about pitching. You know something about that. Since last we talked, which was Monday, a couple of days ago, we find out about Stephen Brault. He's going to be out for a while now. So how, what does that do? How does that affect what's happening with that spot now on the pitching staff? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, Brault probably had the advantage on that spot, a spot because of what he did last year, at least in my mind. Um, you know, there, there was a – he had a stretch there uh, you know, before September where he threw about two and a half months. He was our best starting pitcher. I mean, he was fantastic. So uh, I really thought he had earned that fifth spot, but now – you know, I don't see how that's possible. Um, you know, nobody is saying that he can't still be there, but um, I, I would be extremely surprised. You know, I've been telling people this morning that it's got to be ninety percent that there's that he is not going to be a starting pitcher mm-hmm. when the season starts. You can't take two weeks off in the middle of spring training and then be ready to start when spring training uh, begins. Now, I, I I think he could certainly be ready to throw an inning or two coming out of the bullpen. Uh, as long as his shoulder responds, uh, you know that's another thing too. We're assuming that it's going to feel all fine and dandy in two weeks, so we'll we'll have to see. But uh, right now, it looks like the number five spot uh, for sure, unless there's some other problems that you know creep in. It's going to be Holland. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's he's looked pretty good in his couple of starts he's had down here. Um, you know, he's a, of course uh, an older guy that's been around and and uh, has had uh, success at the big league level. And, and, and I was talking today, too, about, you know, back when we were, um, you know, doing pretty well and, uh, and, and getting some wild card appearances, uh, we always seemed to have that, uh, you know, veteran guy uh, come up and, and you know, still have a lot of t- gas in the tank. You know, somebody, uh, you know, like, like Lariano, uh, for instance. So, um, you know, I, I hopefully uh, – you know we're gonna gonna have that again this year. You know, if Holland Holland can maybe be that guy that uh, you know by the time we get into July, you're looking around saying, "Wow, Holland is like been our best starting pitcher." I mean, he's really doing a great job. I mean, that's that's a possibility. He still still may have a nice little run left in him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not not like he's ancient, but anytime a guy gets, uh, I think he's 33, maybe. So anytime you get into your you know, middle thirties. Um, you don't know what to expect out of that that arm and that body. So we'll just have to wait and see. But um, you know, that I, I would definitely think that Holland is going to be that fifth guy now, and and Brault will have to start the year if he is healthy and doesn't start on the uh, on the injured list. If he's healthy, it'll probably be in the bullpen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on the other end, with the youngster or a much younger guy, I'm talking about Mitch Keller. How can he get more? consistency it seems like he's got he's at one end or the other and sometimes nothing in between yeah i'm i think it's his control just needs to be better um you know, there there was we were, we were doing the game monday where he was pitching and he was uh you know kind of typical you know a couple of hitters really good a couple of hitters not so good and the control was here and there and and joe was talking about last year how um how it, you know he's talking about the, the the metrics that they use a lot of nowadays you know mm-hmm. like the batting average on balls put in play and uh was way high and um he had a lot of uh two strike fastballs uh, you know go for base hits and and um I'm like well you know that in the old days that that batting average means that when they're hitting the ball they're hitting it hard off of him which means he's making a lot of mistake pitches to me, that's that's you know old school looking at at what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He's making a lot of mistake pitches, and as far as like you know two strike fastballs getting hit, I mean the, the guy throws ninety five miles an hour. Uh, a two strike fastball should be if with that kind of velocity a very good pitch for you, but you have to put it where you where you need to, and you have to you know es- establish the fact that you know you have a good breaking ball and you can get them out with that. And that way, that fastball, it looks like it's even coming in there faster. I mean, uh, we talked about Brawl. I just talked about Brawl a minute ago. 
about how well <clears throat> he pitched last year. And, one, and, and it, he throws fastball after fastball after fastball after fastball. He doesn't throw nearly as, as hard as Keller, but he was putting those balls in some good spots. He had good command, and that's why he was pitching so well. And, and that's, I think, where, where Keller has come up short in the short time that I have seen him, is that his control is where he's throwing the ball is a little inconsistent. And now I'm not saying you can never go in the middle of the plate. You've, you, you've heard me over the years, you know, do ball games, and I, and, and, and I make fun of somebody saying, oh, I made one bad pitch and went for a home run. No, you, you threw 30 of them down the middle of the plate. One of them went for a home run, and that's the one you remember. Yeah. You, you, guys with good stuff throw balls in the middle of the plate, and they always don't get hit hard. But when they do, we notice it, and we say, oh, look, too many pitches in the middle of the plate. His stuff's good enough to go in the middle plate. He's throwing too many in there, and so a few of them are getting hit hard, and we're definitely looking at those. Well, you got a lot of evaluation today because you have a split squad. Where are you going to be? Oh, excuse me, I had to get a sip of coffee. Oh, that's um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be. I'm going to be in the Bradenton game. So my my focus will be Trevor Williams today. There's another big, uh, you know, question mark that we got to have. Uh, answered in the positive of this year. If we're going to be good, Trevor's going to have to pitch like he did in 2018, not like he pitched last year. Uh, and you know, that's yeah. that's just it. That's the truth. Uh, it's not like we have a ton of depth coming up. You know, there's there's uh, you know some young guys that might do okay, uh, but you got to have Keller come come through, and you got to have Trevor Williams come through. You got to have Archer come through. Um, you know, I have a lot of faith in, in Musgrove. Musgrove. Uh, you know, really was solid for us last year. But there's a lot of guys that are question marks right now in that rotation of who you're going to get. And Trevor Williams is one of those guys. And so I'm going to be watching today, and hopefully uh, he has a good game and and looks like the, uh, the Trevor Williams of 2018. All right. We'll talk about it Friday. Walkie, thanks a lot. I'm old school, too. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk with you on Friday. All right, talk to Friday. Bye-bye. Yeah, you got it. There you go, Bob Walk.